What's up there, Facebook Live? Stop me if you've heard this before. Hey, and this is not a weapon. Yeah, we all know how that works. This is Mr. V, and welcome to our final episode of Instrument Demos on, from the bunker down in Cambodia for Mr. V's Garage Band. Today, you asked for it, you got it drums and percussion. Can't tell you how many people have reached out to me to say, hey, this is what I would like to see. Well, today's your lucky day. Save the best for last, so to speak. All right, we're going to start with what you all have been looking for and wanting to see, uh, the drums. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't drag the entire percussion section with me all the way down to my basement, but I could bring just a couple of things with me. So I have a snare drum and I have a practice xylophone uh, to demonstrate some of the mallet instruments. So let's start with the snare drum. You can see it's on this cool little stand that comes right up about to my waist and it is called a snare drum, A, because, well, it's a drum, and because it has this cool little thing on the bottom. We'll go ahead and pull it up so the cameras get a better look at it. This little thing right there is a snare. It comes from like the old trapper's snare that they would set out and an animal would step in and would get their foot caught in. Um, it would get ensnared. It would be ensnared, so to speak. But, um, it is held on by this cool little mechanical arm right here. It is a little screw. We can tighten it and loosen it. And when I push this lever up, it pulls the snares tight to this clear plastic head. You can't see it. Maybe I can get the light to kind of reflect off of it a little bit. There is a, 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 a head there, a drum head there, that I don't, I would never, ever, ever, ever take a snare drum or beat on. That's what the other head is for. This is called the, the battering head. Um, but this little gizmo here tightens and loosens the tension on that snare. And that's actually a really, really cool, helpful thing to have because as a percussionist, when you're playing the snare drum, you want that little snare lined up in a straight line right about with your belly button. Right. Um, so I have this I could maybe raise it just a little bit higher, but I think it's going to be good for now. Um, so the, the battering head, or the batter head, is it's, it's thicker than the snare head, and it's, it's got that, that hard durable, so when I lay into that drum, it, it, it's not going to break. Right? Um, uh, there have been times where I have told percussionists to take home run swings at at uh, drums, and if they break it, then they know that they've done a good job. Um, I'm going to just tap around the side of the, of the drum, and you can hear it sounds different on the side, where the, but as soon as I come back to the middle of the drum, where the snare is, it's got more of a clear, crisp sound. If I move out to the side, it's got kind of a tinny, almost, almost kind of like the edge of a djembe sound. Okay? Now, as I move the drumstick to the middle, ah, right there in the sweet spot, right in the middle of the drum, that's, that's the sweet spot. That's where we get that crisp sound of, of a snare drum that, that's so prevalent, especially in American march music um, and uh, other concert music. The snare drum is actually a very, very, very young addition to uh, the instrument family. Back in prior prior to uh, really the, the 1800s, uh, the snare drum wasn't even included in any orchestra or anything like that. It was would have been considered kind of more of like a folk instrument for people out there. And then uh, it began to be used. Uh, they took a if I undo the snare, you can hear it has kind of that military field drum. Um, sound to it, but as soon as I pull that snare, I don't know if you can hear that there, that's the snare 
getting pulling, getting pulled tight to the drum. Now we've got that that crisp snare drum sound. So uh, I have a set of Vic Firth. Uh, what are these? These are SD1 Generals. Um, and uh, what I love about these drumsticks is they have a built-in uh, grip locator. Uh, so for those of you playing along at home, maybe you have a set of drumsticks or something like that. You can certainly go, or you can certainly follow along. We want to get the drum stick to right about to a spot where it's going to be mostly balanced. Um, and take your thumb and just pinch right there so that the drumstick, you can see, it's not really wanting to lean forward or lean back. If I, if I, if I move my thumb back, you see the, the drumstick really moves back. And for, for like a drum set drummer, that's important because you want to use that, use gravity to come down on the step. But for a, your more classic band snare drummer, you want to have a, a neutral grip where the, the, uh, the drumstick is not uh, leaning forward too much into the drum but is also not leaning back. If I, if I think we don't want that either, right? And this is to help preserve our wrists. We wanna make sure we have a good grip on the drumstick correctly because if our, if our wrists get hurt, we're gonna, we're gonna develop a carpal tunnel syndrome really quick, fast, and in a hurry, and our drum careers will be over. So I'm gonna start by using what's called matching grip. And matching grip, as you might guess just by the name, means that both of my the grips that I'm using on the stick are matched. Now why is it, doesn't, isn't that what you would always use? Well, yes and no. Uh, there is what is called traditional grip, or tradish for short. Um, and I will talk about that just momentarily. That's more of like an advanced thing, more of a drum line thing, which by the way, shout out to my friends in the Percussion High School drum line and to all those other drum lines out there. This video is kind of for you. Um, all right, so we're going to use matching grip. We're going to just take, get to that, that get our thumbs on the uh, dot of the eye of Vic. And I'm going to bring this stick up just a little bit closer so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see there are a couple of red dots on you know, over the words Vic and Firth and we want to we we'll put the tip of our thumb right on the dot of the eye in Vic and that we'll just that's a nice little pinch right flatten them out like this and then we've got these three fingers back here and they are not actually going to grip the stick you don't Grip on the stick is in your. You don't get any rebound with the stick that way. They are just there for the ride. Roll the wrists over, right? And not like this. We're not chicken wing, mechanical monkeys. We're not doing that. Just elbows should be relaxed right on right next to our sides. And you can see I've got the wrists rolled over so that the tops of my hands are pointing up at the roof of the garage here. And you'll notice that all the action happens at the wrist. And I've got my giant watch on here. But the action happens right here at the wrist. There's no action happening at the elbow or the shoulder level here. Those remain pretty still. And if I want to increase the volume, I just increase the stick height. Okay? Now, the other cool thing about playing snare drum is that there are sticking patterns called rudiments. Say that word with me, rudiments. And all, that's a fancy, fancy drummer word for meaning sticking pattern. Sequences of right, right, left, left, right. Or left, left, right, right, left. Or left, right, right, right. Or little double bounces and things like that with, with your sticks. Um, most of the rudiments have a have uh, funny names, right? And the funny names kind of sound like what you're doing. For example, there is a what's called a paradiddle, right? If you say that very slowly, paradiddle, and then see what it is, which is a right, left, right, right, paradiddle, paradiddle, 
right? You can see how some of those funny names match what you're doing. Now, of course, there are other rudiments which you really have nothing to do with what your sticking pattern is, like a single flammed mill, or a Swiss Army triplet, or a pata flaw flaw, or uh, accent, uh, paradiddle accent, or flam accent. But uh, there are there are other ones that are you know involved with what the name is. So like a flam is where I start my sticks at a, at a different a different height and I let them just drop at the same time. Or, and it creates a little grace note effect kind of a thing. Um, and there are certain, uh, there are certain rudiments that require you to let your sticks just continue to bounce. it ends up sounding like you're holding a note out. That's called a buzz roll or a concert roll. Um, and then sometimes we let our stick bounce twice. And it creates a really, really, really cool buzzing effect. We call that a double stroke roll. Um, so that is the snare drum. I'm going to set uh, the snare drum over here. 